Hello, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, now this week I'd like to start talking about templates. I'm not going to be able to talk about all of templates in one week because this is quite a vast subject um, that I feel like I can bring something new and um, something more than what you would have seen just by following along um, in, in the other video tutorials and in the documentation because there are some subtleties to understand uh, with this topic. So this week I'm going to focus just on the concept of master templates. Um, and then next week what we can do is we can start to talk about action templates. So to get started in this discussion, um, I also need to differentiate the way that we do things between Animate and Animate Pro. Uh, the way that we do things in Animate Pro and Harmony is the same. So when I show you Animate and Animate Pro, the same thing will apply for Harmony that does for Animate Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start out with an animate first. And for those of you who are using animate, you will know that it is a layer-based compositing system. So what that means is that you don't have a network view that you're using to string to the, together the hierarchy that defines your characters. What you have instead is you have a, um, a timeline with layers, and then you drag and drop those layers on top of each other to indent them, thus creating your hierarchy here. So since Animate is a layer-based um, compositing system only, we only have the timeline accessible for when we're doing things like creating templates. And when you're creating templates, um, it's important to understand that there's a difference between what happens on the left side of the timeline over here and what happens on the right side of the timeline. And um, when you're creating things from the left side of the timeline, this is how we create a master template. Creating templates from the right side of the temp timeline is going to be creating action templates. So we won't talk about the right side of the timeline until next week. Um, this week, we're going to focus on the left side of the timeline. So there's a couple of concepts to be aware of when you're creating a master template. The first thing is that you really want to have a master peg and um, a master peg that is the parent of all of the other drawing layers there so that you can collapse everything inside that peg. That way when you're creating your master template you can select the master peg and it will automatically select everything inside of it. It's very important to have a master peg. Um, and then the other thing that's very important is it's very important to have a keyframe on the first frame of your layer here. Um, and the reason for this is that sometimes you do things like you nudge elements in space in order to set the Z depth, um, especially when you have something like this character where you have all three views on the same timeline here. Um, in this case, there might be some nudging that's taking place, like the arm might be nudged in front on one um, keyframe here, on one key pose, and it might be nudged um, in, in behind on a different one, like on this first one, it might be behind. So you need to have a keyframe on the first frame of your master template in order to define all of those functions and all of those values and to make sure that you're, that you're keeping that Z depth information in there. And so in this case I can see that I already do have a keyframe on the first frame of each pose here, but if you didn't, then you can just collapse everything inside your master peg and then you can select the first frame and then you can hit F6, which is going to create your keyframe. And it's um, you know in there as an insert keyframe in your right click menu. So after you have collapsed everything inside a master peg and after you have created a keyframe on the first frame, now what we can do is we can drag and drop into the library in order to create our master template. Do not, however, drag into the symbols library. There is a difference here between the symbols library and the template libraries that you'll find underneath. And um, the symbols library refers to symbols that are local to this scene. For example, it looks like they have a few symbols that define certain drawing elements that probably they're using a symbol to, um, to gather together an arm and a patch, for example. That's a good reason to use a symbol. Uh, but symbols cannot be copied from one scene to another scene directly. So if I open up a new scene, 
I will not see these symbols in that new scene. These symbols are local to this scene. If you want to create templates that will be available for multiple scenes, then you need to save them somewhere else. Now the default location where you can save something is the Animate Library. Um, and this library, if you mouse over it, you can see that it's going to show you where it's pointing to on your file system. So um, I'm using a Mac right now, so it's pointing to users and then my username documents uh, to Boom Animate. If you are on a, a Windows machine, it's going to be inside my documents and then Toon Boom Animate. And um, so inside that library, it's, it's just a folder where it's going to save that information. So there's nothing really special about this folder. And I want to explain that briefly so that you understand that you can point to any folder here. For example, I've opened up the desktop. And the reason I opened up the desktop is because I had saved some images in here that I might want to drag and drop back in. You can right click here and you can open any library. A library is simply a folder on your file system. So let's say if I want to go into my documents um, directory and I want to add a new folder that I'll call my special library, it's just a folder that you've created in your file system. And then now this folder is a place where I can store template information. And um, it automatically will show this folder inside of my library window when I look at new scenes because of the fact that I have done that open library thing in here. If you um, don't see the library that you're interested in, just go ahead and do the open library again. Now if I try to drag my template in here, you'll notice I get the no entry sign. It's not going to let me do it. And the reason for that is that there is a lock on this folder. And all folders are locked by default when you open your scene to prevent you from accidentally dragging and dropping things in your library because this can make your library very cluttered. So if you want to unlock it, you can just right click and select Write to Modify, which gives me the right or the ability to modify this drawing layer. And uh, whoops, it looks like I somehow cloned that guy. Okay, so now that I've got my um, library open and the right to modify, I can select from the left hand side of the timeline and I can drag and drop it into my library. And when you do that, it will pop up a little rename dialog uh, because it tries to find uh, its own idea of what to name this um, template, but it might not be the best name from your perspective. So this one I can call Karate Rabbit Master, and I can get rid of the rest of the information there. And then I can just leave it like that. And now I've got this template in my library. Now, something that... Um, some people do, by the way, and I just want to make sure that you guys are exposed to this, is some people will have separated rigs for the front, the uh, three-quarter, the side, the different views. They'll have separate rigs. So what happens in that case is they have one master rig for the three-quarter. They have a completely separate master rig for the front, a completely separate one from the profile. And then when you're switching from one, um, you know, from one view to the other, what they'll do is they'll drag it as separated timelines. I know I've mentioned the word separated timelines a couple of times, but you might not know what that means exactly. So now when I drag that into my scene, let's pretend that this one is my front view, and I'll just, um, you know, sort of cheat that by deleting some of the other stuff. So the top one is my front view, and I'm going to make the bottom one my side view or my three-quarter view. And I'll just delete the exposure on both of those. So now I have two different drawings or, or two different um, frames here. I've got one rig for the front view and one rig for the side view. So people that prefer to work with separated timelines, there are some advantages and disadvantages to working this way. Um, the advantages are that you don't have to worry about Z depth changes. You don't have to key or nudge elements in Z depth because they'll always be in the same spot for that view. Um, and then the disadvantage is that you can't swap directly from one to the other on the same timeline. So that means that, let's say, if I know that I want to have the front view until frame 10, I can just extend the exposure until frame 10, and then I will now swap over to the three-quarter view on frame 11, and I can hold that one until frame 20. 
And so they are completely separated. They're not sort of sharing the same timeline. So that's what I mean when I say separated timelines.